away we go. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. We're going to get started uh, with the February um, webinar for the assessment implementation. And I'm going to uh, begin by sharing the screen and we'll start uh, by taking a look at the PowerPoint. We're gonna be jumping back and forth between the PowerPoint and several other uh, items. So if you have questions, please use the chat. Um, we'll be kind of monitoring that and seeing uh, where, where things are at. If we have to respond to someone, uh, we will do that at the appropriate time. Okay, so let's uh, continue on. Again, as always, the purpose is so that, uh, yeah, you don't have to sign in, we know where you are. Um, but we are better when we work together, so please make sure that if you have questions that not only asking Sarah and I, but uh, anyone else who's in the group, uh, as well as people at different schools, because it definitely helps. Today's agenda, uh, we're gonna take a look briefly at the climate survey. Uh, I know some of you are deeply involved in that, but others aren't, so we'll take a, a quick look at that. We're gonna spend most of our time looking at the Wisconsin Forward Assessment. You can see we have a, a list of things that we wanna discuss, everywhere from supports and accommodations to technology and family communications. We'll talk about a map update, um, which has uh, been evolving over the course of the last week. And then finally, if there are any lingering questions, we'll take a look at those as well. Okay, so the climate survey, I'm gonna focus specifically on the student survey and uh, uh, the purpose and some of the things, the questions that are coming up to, to me um, as we're moving uh, through this survey window. First of all, the intention is that all students grades three and up would have a chance to take the survey. Um, and this is what the kind of data that we're looking for um, is to get them to be able to respond. Uh, not just some, but all students. There, the survey has changed this year. The idea of sending out an email to everyone or a paper copy is not a possibility this year. Um, it's only available through a link. Now the student survey is found on your specific building's LMC page. So if you were to go to the LMC page um, from your student, from your school website, uh, I usually look for students and then the LMC, um, you'll find this image of the survey client, the climate survey window or one similar to that on that LMC page. Click on that and it takes you directly to the survey page. Now, the survey, as I've said before, uh, but I just want to reiterate, is a confidential document. It is not anonymous. So confidential means we're not sharing data with anyone that is linked to either a parent, a staff member, or a student. Uh, we do need to have the student um, ID number simply because that, that takes care of having to ask questions about race, ethnicity, et cetera. So that's all that is for. On the right-hand side of the survey, you'll find a drop-down in which the student can control the language of the survey. It is in English, Spanish, and Hmong. So the student can literally, uh, on page one, select one language, um, and on page two, select another language. They can do whatever language it is that they wish to use. Now, there was some issues today, uh, February 21st, uh, this morning, uh, the, the vendor had some problems with their servers, and so there were students who were not able to take the assessment, uh, excuse me, the climate survey. Uh, so as a district, we've decided to extend the window until Tuesday, the end of the day, Tuesday, February 28th. So that's one more week from today, so an additional two days to complete the survey. Some of you are probably as close to being done as you are going to be, so that doesn't make a difference, but we wanna make sure that everybody has a chance to do this in a timely fashion. Now, most of the questions that I've been getting actually have been about staff and families and not student surveys this year. So the change this year, um, is that every single staff member, every single family has a specific uh, link for them. For they, there are no generic parent survey links. There are no generic staff member links. Each one is tailored specifically for uh, you as an individual. 
So it's really important that we do not share the links with, with one another. So uh, you may say, oh, I, I haven't gotten a survey yet. Well, then someone says, well, here, have mine. I'll send you the link. That does not work. Um, also, because of the data collection that we're doing and the amount of work that uh, goes with that, there are no paper copies going to be um, used this year. So uh, great ideas for taking uh, families and sitting, having them sit down and then transfer that to a, a link. However, because of the specific uh, nature of the, the uh, data that's being collected, that cannot be done. We are connecting with families and with um, staff via email or text. Some families have said, please send me the SMS messages um, rather than emails. And so it has gone out in, in uh, both formats with multiple reminders. Now, one of the things that we try to balance very carefully is not to have people just swamped with too much information. If you're a family that has students in, let's say, three different schools, you are going to get three different surveys. And we try to space that out so that you would not get three surveys on the same day, um, just so that it was, uh, and people weren't getting overwhelmed with that. Same thing with staff. If you have a, if you're a staff member that works in multiple schools, you will likely um, get surveys at different intervals. If you have not gotten a survey yet from all of your schools, please let me know and I will um, forward that on to make sure that you get that um, multiple survey. We have staff members who are working in up to five different buildings. So um, I guess I think that's about it. Um, any questions coming up on chat? No, not about that. Okay. So, Let's move on to the forward exam, the, the big component of the um, webinar today. Um, so things that have changed, some things that we really want to make sure that we point out to you, uh, things that have changed from last year. First of all, uh, is something called text-dependent analysis. Uh, this was uh, something that was done last year, but it wasn't very clear, and we're going to make sure that everybody has some uh, more information about this. Text-dependent analysis is one of the um, English language arts sessions. So it is extended uh, uh, reading. So it might be a longer passage or it might be two passages. And then also the staff will have, uh, staff students will have the um, uh, opportunity to uh, go deeper into their analysis of that answer the questions a little bit longer, right? Um, and we'll talk about this in a few moments as far as scheduling this particular component. Also, I want you to be aware that the test administration manual for this year has been released. It is out. Um, we'll be making sure that's posted on our website. And then uh, uh, if you uh, have questions about exactly how to do things, that's the place that we turn to first. Finally, just released is the online tool training of the OTT, you know, always, we always have to have more acronyms. Um, online tool training um, is a piece, and I'll show that to you in just a few moments, uh, for students to actually get in and use some of the, the uh, uh, tools that are available for all students, the universal supports, uh, potentially the designated supports, as well as some of the other tools, so that they have a sense for that before going into the tests. This is often most uh, appropriate for third grade students as they've never seen this kind of test before. Uh, students who are in uh, older grades, fourth and up, have seen at least one time the forward exam. They've seen MAP multiple times, um, et cetera. So it's really important to spend some time with third grade students prior to testing. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, supports and accommodations. And the first thing I want to say is I really want everybody just to relax and to breathe. This is a nice, cool, tranquil forest. Um, actually, it might be warm today. Um, I want to make sure that everybody knows we're going to get there. And I know there's a lot of stress on folks to be able to get things done. But just understand that we are in this together and we're making sure that you uh, get what you need as well as uh, letting you uh, have questions 
from um, uh, from what we uh, are able to do. So, uh, you have been sent a Google Sheet, and um, as of today, uh, the sheet actually has been locked so that it's now read only. Um, on that Google Sheet was a a series of, of potential supports for students who are English language learners as well as struggling readers. Uh, that is critical information that we need to get into the forward system, eDirect, and to make sure that those students have those supports. Now, as of today, this is locked. So if you did not get a chance to do that or if something changes, please email Sarah Walner or myself to make sure that, that we get those changes taken care of. Also, one of the things that caused a little bit of stress, and I apologize for that, is uh, we've moved on, sent you out a, an OASIS spreadsheet showing the different supports or accommodations that students with IEPs and, uh, were to get. This was an informational only piece. Uh, we always go with what is on the, uh, in the IEP, so when it's time, we will pull that report again um, and make the necessary changes in eDirect. So that was not for you to act on, it's just to, to show, for instance, that you have three students with open IEPs or something along those lines. Finally, the uh, supports are, going to, are in the process of being uploaded right now. Um, and we will have that done. Unfortunately, the vendor is going to be absolutely locking down the entire um, uh, system uh, for at least a week. And so your tickets, we'll talk about those in a few moments, but the tickets that we're going to print and send to you are going to be on a very tight timeline, um, as is everything this year, uh, on a very tight timeline for um, uh, getting in your hands and getting out to the, the staff. So we'll spend a little bit more time talking about that in a few minutes. Okay, let's move on. Now, on the uh, document, as well as just in general, we've had a couple specific questions about what do I do with students who are new to the country or who are struggling readers? So let's take a look at uh, students who are new to the country first. Uh, English language learners, uh, this, the definition is that they have a cup, they must meet two different criteria. First of all, that they are in the US for less than 12 months. That's total time. So even if in the last two years, they've come and gone between their, their uh, several countries and their back, uh, if we can add up to 12 months only since their first arrival in the United States and they are at DPI level one or two, then we are allowed a one-time exemption of the English language arts portion of the test. So they get a one-time pass on this. However, they must take all other tested areas at that grade level. So if the student is a fourth grader, they don't have to take any of the English language arts, but they will need to take math, science, and social studies. Another special case um, is one in which DPI has, has created this particular part. It's a great idea, but they re re pretty much refuse to define it. So our definition is, uh, if you're a struggling reader, uh, you will get designated supports, and typically you are a student who already is in intervention. Those supports should be similar to what is used in your regular instruction. It should not be a brand new support that you've never had before. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, it might be read aloud. If that never is one of the pieces that is, that's not a typical support, then it's no time to start when we're on an assessment, new assessment. So if you have specific questions about if a student should be a struggling reader um, and also about new to the country, please let me know and we'll make sure that we answer those. Okay. Uh, I want to go back here just a second. Uh, please keep in mind also that, that if you are a uh, struggling reader, um, if you are new to the country, that there are certain uh, supports that cannot be designated, supports that cannot be used together. And I continue to repeat this, but it needs to be said again. Uh, stack translations cannot be used with 
uh, text-to-speech. Uh, the rules that uh, operate um, in the text-to-speech voice are English phonetics, and when you have text-to-speech in Spanish, which is Spanish only, um, excuse me, when you have stack translations, um, they, just, they, they just don't mix. It's a pretty horrible combination. All right, so let's take a look at the online tools uh, practice. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and uh, start again. I've got another um, document that I want to share, so we'll go to we'll go to actually the test site. So here is the online tools training site live. Uh, this is what you would uh, see if you were actually taking kids through this. Uh, you will see that there are two portions of this for students and for administrators. So you can go in and take a look at what the test is, the tools are, et cetera. Let's briefly take a look at what is set up for the students. There are some um, videos that would absolutely be appropriate, especially for um, students um, in third grade. For instance, uh, pausing, edit, exiting, and ending a test. This is a three minute, 30 second video that is, is tells you how to go through actually doing this. Same thing with testing basics uh, and test tools. I'm going to go in and take a look at a specific piece here uh, for a third or fourth grader. There is a ruler, so I'm gonna click on this and you'll see that this is a video. Some questions will ask you to use a ruler. Use the measurement tools button to select either the inches or centimeters ruler. Either ruler can be used to measure the length of an object shown on the screen. So you can see it's very uh, basic, but it is certainly also one that is important for students to be able to get to. So um, these are some pretty important tools that again, students should be able to see. As far as administrators, here are some um, videos that uh, help you if you are doing a translated test accommodations, for instance. Um, that would be something you want to take a look at. Otherwise, you can certainly ask us. Okay, so that is the online test uh, uh, tools. And I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint now. And uh, Okay, so brief videos, I would certainly take a look at those and consider using those with your students. There was also be a practice assessments, uh, practice tests available, um, and that will be coming fairly soon. Uh, we'll let you know when that's out there. Okay. So, now, one of the things that is uh, critical that you will understand is that uh, eDirect is going to be the, uh, the software that we use for all things forward. And if you're looking at this, and if you were involved with the access for ELLs in the not too distant past, it looks very similar. Uh, so you will have, you already have, act, sorry, you already have rights to um, eDirect. You should, as a building coordinator, uh, have gotten an email about this. If you did not, please let us know and we'll make sure that um, you have uh, the correct uh, access to this. What can you do with, with eDirect? First of all, there is a menu bar that's a, in the light blue. It says all applications. That will give you things like um, student management, test management, uh, et cetera. So you'll be able to look and see, for instance, who uh, the students are that are listed in your, in your school and which grade. Also, you'll be able to see and click on and get reports for current status. So if you are, if we're two weeks, three weeks into a set, a testing and you wanna see, uh, is it time to check to see if there's any students who didn't finish, um, you should be able to get a current status report to check that. We will be sending out a document that will show you how to get that, uh, kind of a step-by-step how-to at a later date. Also, um, you should be able to print tickets from eDirect. You probably won't wanna do this unless you uh, have some student who's lost their ticket, uh, or keep in mind that these are secure documents, they uh, should be uh, kept, uh, you should keep control over those. Uh, student ate the ticket, um, whatever. Uh, 
So you may need to print a ticket one at a time. Also, please keep in mind that you can share access to um, eDirect with others in your building. So for instance, if you are working on um, sharing some of the load between yourself and a PST or another staff member, you can provide them access to eDirect as well. All right, everybody's favorite now. Let's talk about tickets. So remember that the forward exam is ticket driven. Unlike MAP, where you have to have a proctor who logs into the computer, the forward exam is completely based on the ticket, the username and password that a student enters once they begin testing or in order to test. So you'll be getting uh, sets of tickets based on the grade levels that are at your school. So if you're in elementary, you'll get uh, third, fourth, and fifth, middle school, sixth, seventh, eighth. Keep in mind that fourth and eighth grade will have four tested areas so that they will have a pretty rainbow of colors. Um, we're going to be testing or printing different content areas on different colors so you'll be able to see them very quickly, uh, differentiate between the content areas. Unfortunately, there are still eight tickets to a page and they are alphabetical by grade level. So within the English language arts, um, you will find they'll start with the letter A and go through all the third graders or all the sixth graders and then move to the seventh graders and eighth graders or fourth and fifth graders. So however it works for your individual school. So unfortunately, we still have to cut them apart. Now, the good thing is you will need one ticket for students to use for all the content area sessions. An example would be there are four different sessions for English language arts. So there is a um, the uh, text dependent analysis, which should be high on everybody's list to get that done first. Um, there's also then the um, reading portion. There is finally uh, there's a listening portion, which is about 20 minutes, and then a writing portion. A student can use all those uh, use the same ticket for all of those particular um, sessions. So when you begin uh, at the, when you start, hand them the ticket, they'll have a username and a password on it. They input that. They will likely get a choice. So which session do they want? Make sure that uh, the, the person who is proctoring the test knows what the test session is going to be for that day. Um, if you are doing the listening session, you certainly want headphones available. Uh, one of the uh, ideas that came up in the face-to-face uh, -face meeting was that you might want to use headphones for all students for all the sessions so that those students who have text-to-speech don't feel singled out as they're the only ones who are having this, the headphones while everybody else is just testing without them. So you might want to use it as um, a noise reduction um, uh, tool. So it allows everybody to stay focused on, on what they, uh, they need to focus on. All right, let's uh, continue with the ticket timeline. As we said, uh, tickets are going to be coming in. We had promised that you would get them one week ahead of the window opening, and uh, we're gonna have to hedge our bets a little bit. The, we will not have the ability to even begin seeing the tickets until March 13th, which is a Monday. And we will be, uh, Sarah will be coming in early, I'm gonna be staying late, and we're gonna be printing tickets all day long. So we're gonna, uh, jump on a copy machine and be printing to that pretty much all day. We will be getting tickets out to you by Wednesday, March 15th. So you should see we'll start as soon as possible. We're going to get them out to you, but physically we won't be able to print all of them in, in a day. As soon as we can get them out, we'll get them out to you, um, you, which means you'll get them probably on Thursday or Friday of that week. And I apologize that we can't get them any sooner. If you need to have them sooner, uh, there are two options. You can come and pick them up from us on the 15th, or you can print them yourself. And I don't think that's an option that too many people would like, but that's an option that's out there. So tickets will be arriving um, somewhere on the 16th or 17th of March, the 20th, which is a Monday. Uh, typically, not too many people start testing on a Monday. You certainly can. It's when the window opens. 
please keep in mind that when you schedule the 21st of March this year is a religious holiday and the board has said no testing on the 21st of March. So uh, in that first week, we already are a day short um, in what uh, our ability is to, to schedule tests. So just some couple things to keep in mind as you move forward and try and, and work around scheduling. All right, technology. Here's a couple things. Uh, again, we're gonna be using Chromebooks this year. Uh, there will be an app in the lower left-hand corner as there was in the past. Um, you, will, it, you will open up the Chromebook and if you uh, select the app menu at the bottom left-hand corner, it will pull up uh, one of the apps will say DRC Insight Online Testing. And we'll get a picture of that for everybody um, to have in a little while uh, and post that as well. Just like Access, uh, this particular test runs on what's called a TSM server. It is something that is local. Uh, we had very few, if any, problems with the TSM servers uh, over the Access testing period. Uh, and this test, the, the forward test, requires less uh, computer power, so to speak. There isn't the speaking portion that was in the Access test. So please keep in mind that you do have to have headphones required. They're required for the listening portion of the test. All right, let's continue. Here is a concern of everybody's opt-outs. Uh, once again, uh, this is going to be an issue at many schools. Please keep in mind that there, there must be a written request to the principal. Now that can come to you as the coordinator, can come to the teacher, but it must end up with the principal. The written request can be in the form of an email. It can also be a handwritten note. It can be a word process type written note, um, whatever, it has to be in writing. We cannot accept phone calls or verbal requests. This is um, typically what we get with 10th graders in high school. Yeah, my parents said we're gonna opt out. Well, no, that doesn't work. We have to have it in writing. Please send a copy of all opt-out requests to either Sarah or myself, as we're keeping track of these uh, requests. Uh, for many reasons, but the most important one is when results come back and we mail them out to folks, uh, to families, uh, one of the things that happens is I get phone calls. Why is it that my student doesn't have results for the mathematics portion? and I'll check and it says a parent opt-out. Um, I want to have the, the evidence that the parent actually did opt them out um, versus um, uh, just somebody uh, saying, yeah, yeah, I have to go to the school to find that out. I'd like to have all that information. So if you have questions about opt-outs, please um, send me an email, um, call, whatever. Um, one more thing about opt-outs before we move on, I just wanted to mention that we're beginning to compile that list right now. So if you have some, don't feel like you need to get them all in order before you pass them on. You can send them to us piecemeal. Um, that way you can kind of clear your brain a bit um, other than not testing them. And uh, But you can send those to us starting right now and that way we'll make sure they're marked in e-direct as parent opt-out. And actually this makes me think of one more thing for tickets. So there's very tight turnaround on um, tickets, that, as Tim mentioned. And due to that, and also due to the way that eDirect works, please keep in mind you will receive tickets for students who are taking dynamic learning maps. You will receive tickets for students who have opted out. Um, we can't remove those students. They will be marked in eDirect, but you will receive tickets. So it will be in your best interest to just have those students on your brain. Um, make sure that those tickets get discarded or, um, as Tim likes to suggest, take a magic marker and just mark through the ticket of those students so that no one can inadvertently test them. But you will receive tickets for all of these students. So uh, keeping a running list for yourself, I think, is a great idea of who has opted out, who is DLM. Uh, Google Sheet, et cetera, would be a good a good thing. Uh, the I, I just want to try and avoid a parent uh, 
the student being stressed out, they make an opt-out request, and then they're told to sit down and take the test anyways, which has happened. So we want to avoid that if at all possible. And another question we just got was, does a parent have to opt out every year? And the answer is yes. Um, they do need to, the opt-out request is only good for one school year, and it does need to be made each year to, um, for us to record it as such. And typically what happens um, is they would opt out with uh, specific tests in mind. So they'll say in the letter, please uh, opt my student out of this blank, uh, blank test, the forward test. Um, that means that's the only test that um, we are opting them out of. If they say, as I've got at the beginning of the year, um, some uh, opt-out letters requesting no standardized testing, then that's what it means, no standardized testing. So in all cases. So please keep the, uh, track of that. I know that sometimes it gets pretty crazy um, in the, the midst of trying to schedule and test students when a note comes in, but it also is very important for us to get a copy of those opt-outs. All right, let's move on. Uh, something that will be happening simultaneously in your buildings, dyna dynamic learning maps. This is the alternate test. Um, wanted to make sure that you knew that this is happening. You don't have to do anything for this. Um, the window opens the same time. Right now, uh, this week is when all professional development has to be completed. Uh, staff members are working on that. They work on something called a first contact, which is information about the student and personal needs profile. Please understand that the nature of this test is diff very different than others. Uh, the uh, case manager is going to be receiving via email a what's called a testlet. It's four to six questions in each content area for a specific student. During the day, they will uh, look at these questions and work with the student to answer the questions. They answer the questions, send that off, um, and then they'll get another email the next day with more questions, another testlet. And this is true for each of the content areas. So if you have a student doing dynamic learning maps in fourth grade, they will be working on English language arts, mathematics, and science. The social studies portion of dynamic learning maps is a checklist that has to be filled in as well uh, in paper as well as uh, uh, in the software. So that's information that the uh, case manager is working with and if they need support, they can work with us uh, or with uh, Peg Moran Hussein and student services. Okay, uh, there's been a lot of stuff going on around uh, winter map. Couple things that I want you to remember and to keep in mind. First of all, we seldom talk about the standard error measure for students. And in the winter map, especially at the middle school level, the standard error measure for each student is often as large as their growth expectation. So uh, there's been a concern by uh, shared with me about uh, meeting growth. And I wanna give you an example of a case in which um, I just want to point this out uh, because I want to make sure that we're putting our energies in the right location. So I had a, a school call and say, um, the map reports say that their student has an expected growth of from fall to winter of three RIT scores. School uh, looked and the student only grew two. Now data dashboard does a simple subtraction and said, Did, does the student meet their, their growth expectation? And the answer is no. Because the student was expected to grow three, they grew two, and so therefore they did not meet their growth target. Now, a couple things. This particular student was in the 99th percentile. And so when that happens, um, there's often very little growth that's expected over the entire year. Also, keep in mind that the standard error measure for this particular student was plus or minus three. So that means that the student could have actually grown as much as five points or gone slid backwards as much as one point. So this dashboard um, says, no, they didn't meet their growth, but really take a look at other pieces of data when making decisions about where you're going to focus your energy. Um, 
think holistically, think around the entire piece of the child, look at the percentiles, um, look at other data. Um, this particular case, this school, the entire grade level had nearly, had over one out of four students in this situation where the MAP expected growth was within the standard error measure for their actual growth. So that's 25% of the students that they're putting energy on uh, into when really we're not sure that that student is actually uh, needs more, um, more attention focused on them. There are other students who really need our support and uh, that's, they're pretty obvious. They lose 10 points of uh, uh, their growth is a negative 10, um, et cetera. Those, those are students we need to spend a lot of uh, time with. Finally, we're going to take a look at this um, in the data dashboard this summer so that this is, uh, you'll be reminded that you need to look at the standard error measure, um, but we don't have time for that during the school year, so it'll happen this summer. Okay, I think we're done for the day. Um, if you have questions about any of this or if there's concerns, please don't hesitate to call us or email us and we'll be posting things on the website as well. Uh, I'm gonna take a moment to see if there are any other questions. Um, we can answer them right now. Um, and there's one more question. All right. Can you address the 2011 norm data versus the new norm data? <laughs> Okay, question about map data, and I'm going to back up. Um, the the uh, NWA has changed their norming. They had a much larger norming group as the, the uh, popularity of map testing grew, grew. They found that the information from 2011 was not appropriate, so they ran a new normative study in 2015 they released it. One of the things that we didn't see until we actually got data in the winter was that not only did they change the, the proficiency level data, but they also changed the expected cut score, excuse me, the expected uh, the targeted growth scores. So where the maximum in the past uh, from fall to winter was a seven point growth. We had students who were expected to grow seven points uh, between fall and winter. And that was what would, um, the expectation was. Now, there are students who are expected to grow 13 points. So instead of having a lot of students who are growing between uh, two and three points, the expectation, uh, we have more students who are expected to grow larger numbers. That was not something that was visible to anyone until we actually ran the data and began looking at this um, just this week. So I know that there were a lot of concerns as people sat down and looked at uh, their, their mid-year winter growth or lack thereof. And uh, I kept asking the questions and we kept digging until uh, we found out that there were some issues with this. Uh, I know that tomorrow, uh, which would be February 22nd, is going to be an SBLT uh, meeting um, with principals and school staff. Um, this will be shared out and explained in greater detail um, at that meeting. So if you have specific questions, you want to see uh, what the numbers look like, uh, have graphs, I have charts, I have however, whatever you want to see, please make sure you connect with me and we'll uh, spend some time talking about that. Okay, thanks so much for being with us, and this will be recorded, and uh, it is being recorded. We will share this with everyone on the website as quickly as possible. Thank you so much, and have a good day.